This is a Let's Talk Church Safety and Security Microsode with your host, Paul Buckner. Hey, Sheepdogs. So it's interesting where life leads. Um, I have interesting days sometimes, a lot. So I'm driving and I look over. I'm driving north, southbound side of the highway, and there's a woman walking down the shoulder talking on the phone, and she's waving at this guy to leave her alone. He's got a large pickup truck, um, plates from another state, and he is... Um, pacing her and not leaving her alone. So I'm figuring it's a rolling domestic. It's probably, you know, they're probably a couple and he's probably being a jerk or whatever. And she's decided to exit the vehicle and he won't leave. And so he paces her a quarter mile. I get turned around. I call non-emergency. I highly recommend, highly recommend that you have the non-emergency number uh, for law enforcement in your phone for your area. I have them for pretty much every, within a three county area of me in the counties that I frequent, I've got every non-emergency number, whether it's for the city, for the state, or it's for um, the county. And so anyway, one thing being another, I call it in, I said, I, I think you've got a rolling domestic going on and it's about to cross a state line. So they're within, you know, starting off within half a mile of crossing a state line. So I call it in and when I do, there's a motorcyclist on, on a three-wheeled motorcycle, turns around, like I did, concerned. He comes around, and when he gets between the guy and the gal, and then the guy goes up and passes, because the guy was right on her. He was within a car length of her, the boyfriend or husband or whatever he was. She seems agitated. I don't know how afraid she was, but she seemed agitated. So I'm keeping a distance. So there's thoughts here, things that I've learned from uh, long, long exposure to weirdness. Um, if you don't have to inject yourself into something, don't. There was no violence. There's no need for me to inject myself into the situation. I can be a good witness. And remember this for things that don't directly involve you. Is there a road rage incident where two guys are screaming at, screaming at each other on the edge of your parking lot? Let them. Call 911. Let the law enforcement come out and deal with it. Odds are, you know, if you can get plates, get them. If you can't, just try to get a description, try to keep people back from it because people get hurt in situations like these and, and needlessly. If, if stupid people want to be stupid, let them. So I get the Arkansas 28. I get the return on the vehicle uh, for the dispatcher. I pull up into the next parking lot. The biker on his three-wheel trike, um, I, think his, I think his heart was sort of in the right place. He turns around and actually puts himself between them. There's not a reason for that. And then he takes it to the next level, which could have been viewed as provocation for a fight or provocation for a shootout. And so he goes up and turns around and pulls in front of the guy's truck. The guy had gone up past the young lady, pulled over on the left. She's walking on the right side of the road. This guy pulls up on the left and he's sitting there because I think the guy realized I've now got two guys because he had seen me. I'm keeping a distance, the biker is not. I've got two guys on me, I should probably take a step back, this probably looks bad. It could have been just an innocent enough spat. It happens, it happened to a friend of mine. And so um, the biker pulls around in front of him, barring his forward momentum, this is a non-law enforcement individual, barring his forward momentum and they get out. I actually took a picture of it while I was on the phone with dispatch and they're up there at the front of the vehicle, not fighting, but it's unclear what's going on. And I told the dispatcher, I was like, this may be about to escalate. I, at this point am, I don't know, hundreds of feet from, I mean, probably 150 feet, 200 feet from the young lady. She's gone on by, I've not made any contact with her. She's on the phone. There's no need to inject myself at this point. And then he's up here basically forcing a confrontation. So he gets back on his bike, the guy gets back in his truck, I don't know what words were exchanged, and then he comes down, and I'm on the phone sitting there watching, and the biker decides to pull in the parking lot and pull around next to me. And so I waved at him, and I said, uh, is everything okay? And he's like, yeah, he's like, it's okay. And I said, all right, I'm on the phone with dispatch, I'll let him know. And then the biker loses it on me, which was completely out of place and foolhardy. The, guy, the guy's actually looking because he has something to prove maybe. He's got a chip on his shoulder. Maybe he's mentally ill. I don't know. I, I can't venture. I mean, I can venture a guess. But he goes, you need to stay off the phone with dispatch and keep the police out of it. This is just a couple having a spat. Okay, I don't know what it is, but I know what I'm gonna do. And that's I'm gonna get the correct authorities involved because I've witnessed an abduction. 
And so, and, and, and this kind of thing can quickly escalate where a mentally deranged individual can suddenly decide, well, if she won't get back in the vehicle and I can't have her anymore, I'm just gonna run her over and kill her. Look it up, it's happened. Girl breaks up with boy, boy runs girl over and kills her. It's happened a lot. So this guy is now literally trying to provoke an incident with me. And it's probably an interest, interesting recording uh, this happened just a few minutes ago. It's probably an interesting recording with dispatch because I'm like, I'm like, okay. I'm like, you can go, it's all right. I'm like, you do you, it's okay. I'm gonna talk to dispatch. And then he gets more and more aggressive to the point that the dispatcher can hear and she's talking to me about it. And then he turns around and he's saying other stupid things to me and then he pulls out. Well, he pulls up to the stoplight and he pulls too far forward for the stoplight to activate. He's actually in front of the sensor, he's in the intersection. So I stay way behind him because why? I've got to go the same way, unfortunately, but why Why initiate more contact? Now, now, right now, I just realized if I had it to do over, I would go up to the light and I would go right. I would go down uh, closer to the state line and I would turn around at the next light and I would come back because then I've completely broken contact because this guy is looking back at me and mean mugging me and getting retarded. And I'm literally sitting here looking at this guy going, okay, Lord. Now the dispatcher said, hey, as the guy left, he's broken. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, you're good. Well, the only thing I can say after action, and we can always learn from our mistakes, so I just had an aha moment, is what I should have done was I should have gone down and gone right, gone down and turned around half a mile, three quarters of a mile away. And when I did, I should have used that to completely break contact with Knucklehead. And he was being a knucklehead. He's back, he's mean mugging me, he's posturing, you know, he's being all kinds of, of goofball. And then he reaches down into his motorcycle and palms something and he's mean mugging me. And I'm like, oh boy. And I I look back to where I could avoid, and about that time the light changed. Because I'm like, all right, this is about to get stupid. And fortunately the light changed. He went up and hung a right, and as he does, he really slows down on purpose. Uh, to to make a a big scene of him mean mugging me and him posturing. I don't need to posture. Dude, I ain't got nothing to prove. If you jumped off that bike and came at me with something deadly and I couldn't evade the situation, I was going to have to put you down. That is, I, I had a conversation with a friend yesterday about this, or a couple days ago about this. The, the longer you train, and my friend Alvin Bowen unpacked this for me, you'll reach a point where you'll look at somebody and based on how they move, based on how they carry themselves, based on how they carry their weapon or whatever, you'll realize that odds are, now bullets travel both ways, the bad guy gets a, uh, a vote. We're not bulletproof, but you'll look at them and realize you probably have their number. And it's not arrogance. There, there will, you will reach a point where you will realize that in the average gunfight with the average bad guy, if, if they go to draw and you go to draw, if you're doing, if you're doing your training correctly, you've, you've got their number and you can outgun them. But here's the thing. And this is the other part of what Alvin and I were talking about in, in this incredible conversation over a cup of coffee. I, I encourage you to befriend your instructors and really get to know them. But the, the conversation went something to the effect of, but the longer you train in situational awareness and the more aware you are and the more heads up you get and the more all of this stuff is that you have, you will actually be much more likely to avoid the situation realize you can get away from the situation without provoking it even worse. It is very hot out today and I had the windows down in this scorching heat, so I the AC is going to have to catch up with me. But you'll probably actually avoid the situation because you, you will find this, the more competent and capable the martial artist, the trigger puller, the person, the more apt they are to avoid the situation, the more apt they are to look at the person and go, this is not gonna go the way you think it's gonna go. We need to avoid this. So in that moment, the one thing that I wish I had done differently, because I did not provoke anything. I was like, all right, fine, have a great day. And then he's provoking, and I'm like, all right, it, that's cool, thanks. And then he's provoking again, and I'm like, all right, you do you, it's okay. You do you, and I realize, the guy's, the guy's irrational and he's wanting to provoke something stupid. Okay, bro, I don't have anything to prove. You can go beat your chest somewhere else, you know, and, and act like a baboon, I don't need to. But if we can come to that realization, I'm on that journey, it never, it never angered me. That actually, the old me from a few years ago, especially 10 or more years ago, I would have been angry and I would have been prideful about it and maybe even had something to prove. Why? What's, what's to prove? And odds are, if something was to go sideways, I would, I would come out the victor. But nobody wins a gun battle when you have to avoid all, involve all these terrible situations that happen. If you avoid the fight, 
and you live to see another day and, and I don't have to get bailed out of jail and I don't have to go get a lawyer and I've got insurance for that. I mean, you know, but why use the things that you don't have to use? Why get into a peeing for distance contest you don't have to get into? And why provoke something that you don't have to? There's no need to go, that's ridiculous. And at the end of the day, this guy probably didn't know Jesus. If I can help it, I never want to harm anybody. I never want to send anybody to meet their maker, especially on those terms. The mindset that we need to be reaching, and that's where I, I see myself headed, and I'd like to think to some degree I've arrived, is that the last thing I ever want to do is hurt you. I mean, if you make me, <sighs> regrettably, I'll do it. But, but I don't want to do it. So my takeaway from that moment, and you saw me have an aha moment on camera, is the one thing I could have done differently in that moment was, because I'm on a timetable, I've got to get to my next stop. I should have turned and gone right when he went left, given him a couple minutes to go be stupid somewhere else, and, and he can have an appointment with stupid somewhere else, and then continued on with my day. So as it is, I've got to run back. I got some parts of my house I got to go get for a project. Uh, I'm gonna change shirts. Uh, it's really hot outside and I was out in it for a few minutes. And uh, so anyway, just remember, keep your powder dry and remember your mindset is, is gonna keep you out of more fights than it'll get you into if you're thinking right. God bless. If you enjoyed this microsode, check out the video and audio versions of the Let's Talk Church Safety and Security podcast.